Hi, in this video, I'm going to talk about units. I think a lot of people have uh, seen units in previous science class, or you have some basic idea that when you're counting physical quantities, there's some, there's some reference size of thing that you use to count things. So I think that's the uh, way in which you have seen units. And I think as far as um, intuitive idea of unit goes, that's good. You know what inches are, you know what centimeters are. And what I want you to go a little bit deeper is the importance of units in physics. Uh, as you might know, physics is the fundamental science. And we have a very particular way we handle units that might be different from how you have seen units handled in biology or chem even chemistry classes. So um, your textbook, I mean, section 1.2, it gives these uh, SI base units. And what I really want you to focus on are these first three. These are really the fundamental units. And it's uh, actually amazing that of all the physical quantities that you can measure in the world, you can boil them down to these three. Let me copy this into a note so that I can talk about it in more depth. So this is the claim I'm making that I want you to pay attention to. In chapter one of our general physics, we are introducing these three units, length, mass, and time, um, in meters, kilogram, and seconds that you might be familiar with already. And the claim I'm making is that in physics, these three units are really all the units that we need. I want to draw a contrast. Think about, for example, you need of pressure. I think this is a unit that you might have seen in chemistry. So if I'm trying to think back to my chemistry class, I think I remember learning about this. I learned about a unit of atmosphere, which can be expressed in unit of torr, which is somehow equivalent to millimeters of mercury. And I think there was one more, uh, kilopascal, 101.3 kilopascal. I may be misremembering it. You should look it up to be sure. Um, so this might describe the, I don't know, chemistry approach to units. So to talk about one quantity pressure, you've heard <laughs> quite a few units atmosphere, Tor, and Pascal. And may maybe you don't need all of them. And I guess uh, chemistry is in fundamental science. So what, uh, so, the, so the way of representation that a chemist uh, emphasizes values will be different from how we physicists like to <laughs> emphasize and represent. And to draw contrast, in physics, we prefer not to introduce any new units. And in some fundamental sense, we don't. I mean, we do use unit of Pascal. That's the most preferred unit in physics to describe pressure. But how we describe this Pascal is in terms of length, mass, and time. And this is how you will see us do it. So if we have quantity of pressure, Pressure is actually related to other physical quantities. It's related to force and it's uh, related to area. Pressure is a force per area. I think we covered that towards the end of the semester. And I think you know enough of geometry to know that area can be represented as product of two lengths, length times another length. But you might look at force and say, oh, so force is a quantity that we would maybe need a new unit to express it in. And it's the amazing thing that you learn in physics, that force can actually be expressed in terms of these three basic quantities. So in a couple of weeks, you are going to learn about Newton's second law, which says that net force is equal to mass times acceleration. So mass is one of the quantities that we already have a unit for, kilogram, and acceleration 
is another quantity that we can express in terms of length and time. So we'll cover it in the coming week. Acceleration is, oh, how do I say this without calculus? I'll just say change of, change of uh, position per change of time, which is velocity uh, per change of time. So all of this put together, I guess, if you are just interested in the quantity, the unit of acceleration, what we would say is the unit of acceleration is unit of length. That's the same unit as unit of position per unit of time squared. So to wrap it all up, to describe the unit of pressure, we can describe it as a, this combination of length, mass, and time units. The combination is, so one factor of mass in the force times, so I have acceleration, so one factor of length. Um, and in the acceleration, we have two factors of time dividing, time squared. Uh, so that's a unit for the force divided by area. So that would be two factors of length, so length the square. So that's a unit of pressure in terms of the fundamental unit of mass, length, and time. Now, we are going to be working with SI unit system quite a bit. I think it stands for system international. It's some French or <laughs> it means international system. Um, so in the SI unit system, it's constructed in a very peculiar way. The peculiar way is that whenever you have drive the units. So for example, pressure comes in unit of Pascal and Pascal is one of the drive units. Drive the units are constructed from these fundamental units by simple multiplication. So I can say one Pascal is equal to one kilogram times meter per second squared, also per meter squared. Oh, so if I simplify it a little bit, canceling out this, I can say one Pascal is one kilogram per second squared per meter. And within the SI unit system, we deliberately constructed these derived units so that um, we don't have to wor worry about what this factor will be. It'll always be one. And it, this is a contrast to more customary unit system where one atmosphere how that relates to other basic units, <laughs> you have to memorize it. Same deal with the uh, uh, tor and millimeters of mercury. Um, so the main reason for having the SI unit system is to make this uh, derivation process simple. So that as long as you know how these physical quantities relate to each other, from knowing this, you already know how the units will relate to each other. So your textbook spends some time covering these basic units of time, length, and mass. Um, it's interesting history. I recommend that you read through it. And I guess uh, we don't have time to quite talk about it in depth. But one thing I want you to put it on your radar is something called dimensional analysis. Uh, let me spell it out. And you will see examples of this throughout the semester. I guess at this point, I will just say this much. It's a way of validating your mathematical expressions by taking careful look at the units that your physical quantities are expressed in. Um, so you might call it analysis of units. And it's a very powerful tool that um, uh, whose importance you will <laughs> recognize more as you go into higher levels of engineering and um, physics. So, so I'll leave that there. Um, thank you for watching. Uh, until next time, bye.